All systems are nominal. Initialize Genesis sequence. <laughs> Oops, that was too loud. Thank you so much for waiting. It was a little bit of uh, internet issues. So thank you so much for joining me today. While well, I'm going to be talking about how to design child-friendly technologies. So my name is Isra Sherazad Gumiri, and I'm a software engineer. I also do STEM mentoring. So STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Maths. And I am from Algeria, and if you're wondering where is that, it is actually the largest country in Africa, and if you look at the map, you wouldn't miss it. But I usually answer, but it's just right next to Morocco. So speaking of, uh, I attended last week the uh, DevOps Morocco, and big shout out to the organizing team and fellow speakers for, for, for such a heartwarming uh, event. Um, so I truly believe in the transformative power of education, and I really love how to inspire the next generation to pursue a career in STEM. So on today's plate, we're going to talk about how to design innovative curriculum design. We're going to see some interactive learning tools, how to optimize the screen time for our little learners, and also talk about hybrid learning approaches. We're going to talk about some challenges and solutions that I personally faced and ended up with impact out outcomes. What is not on the menu? Please note that I am nowhere near telling you how to be a good parent or how to do your job as a teacher. And even though I would love to, but we're not going to code a child-friendly platform today. So just to give you a little context why we're talking about this, I want you to raise your hand if you identify in the following situations. So I want you to raise your hand if you knew what you wanted to be when you grew up. Oh, I can see some hands. Cool. Raise your hand if you wanted to be a doctor. That's a classic one, right? Are you now? It's never too late. How about an astronaut? Who wanted to be an astronaut? So cool. It's also never too late to do that. Raise your hand if you wanted to be a fish. <laughs> OK, that makes us two. <laughs> How about a software engineer? Cool. You're living the dream now, right? Awesome. Raise your hand if you did not know what you wanted to be when you grew up. That was also my case. I kind of feel not lonely now. So just maybe it might be a TMI, but I also uh, got into computer science by chance. And it was actually the recommendation of my father, uh, where he saw that it might be the right career for me. So I fell in love with the world of zeros and ones from first sight, or you can say from first class. So thanks, Deb. Uh, but I was so mad that I haven't met them before. That's why I promised myself to work harder, to give the young generation exposure to the STEM field, to help them get inspired to choose a career of their choice, and also to create an amazing future engineers. So how are we going to do that is by designing child-friendly technologies. Let's start by defining what do we mean by engaging. So engaging is something that captures and holds attention. So hold on to that thought. And if we're talking about child-friendly, we're going to the child, sorry, to define what is a child. OK, so a child is a young human being. Uh, who is uh, below the age of puberty, and if we're talking about legal point of view, we're talking about below the age of majority, which is 18 in most countries. 
So something is a child friendly is designed specifically for children. And if we sum up everything, uh, if we're talking about engaging child friendly technologies, we're referring to digital tools specifically designed for children that captures and maintain their attention. But how we're going to make that interactive, fun learning experience for them. And here, where we talk about the child-computer interaction. As software engineers, I might think that you also have heard about human-computer interaction. So child-computer interaction is a subdomain of that. If you're interested as a parent or educator or just a software engineer who wants also to inspire the next generation to pursue a career of STEM, you may want to get these uh, points in your mind. First point I'm going to talk about is the attention span. Okay, so when we're talking about attention span, for young children, it is mostly two to five minutes per year of age. So if we're talking about a six years old, um, so his attention span is going to be about 12 to 30 minutes. Uh, while designing your platform, or your course, your lesson plan, you want to make sure that it is in that range. So, as an adult or even um, young learners, uh, we have a lot of types of learners. So, to develop a course or a lesson plan, not only in technologies, you can apply that to multiple domains. Uh, it, is, it is proved that uh, using visuals, auditory, and kinesthetic activities can improve the retention by up to 75%. So what I'd like to do is just to enhance the attention spans of my learners is to use some videos for movies, uh, make them use their hands to stick posting, or uh, learn how to um, code by writing uh, on a white paper, just like the old days. Gamified learner. I think that also uh, applies to adults as to young learners who doesn't want to have that uh, achievement satisfaction after um, being on the top in the leaderboard or um, getting that uh, effect after winning a game. Uh, so also gamification can really boost the cognitive uh, performance to children up to 12 to per sorry to 25 percent. So uh, you can use some kind of a quizzes, some online tools. Uh, maybe I will be referring to teaching artificial intelligence for kids, but also you can apply all of those elements into all uh, STEM fields courses. One of the um, instructional design points is called sca scaffolding, uh, which kind of um, supports the learner and builds on their cognitive development based on what they know. So we're starting on what they know to something that they cannot know. And supporting them uh, doing this um, structured project uh, can give them the confidence. And there is something called IKEA effect, just like you build that furniture and have that satisfaction of building your own thing. We're going to apply the same thing to our young learners. So what we're going to do is to give them a project and then let them do them on themselves and try to support them uh, little by little, step by step, until removing all the scaffolding to get the achievement that they learned this by themselves. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the interactive learning tools that I usually, um, uh, usually, sorry, used in my uh, courses, and you can take uh, pictures of that. Uh, I used a lot of uh, QR codes, so it would be easy for you to access. Uh, one of my favorite uh, learning tools is Hour of Code. Who heard of Hour of Code? No one? Okay, so Hour of Code is a platform that uses, um, just like Scratch, whoever used Scratch before? Cool. So it has the same uh, programming language, which is called Blockly, those little blocks that you, your long, young learner can use to build up the algorithm. And um, 
in this course, they would also learn machine learning tools, uh, but the concept in a really simplified way, which also gives them an idea what is uh, training, how can we use the data, how can a machine um, recognize things, and so on, and then at the end, build their own little project. One of the cool t uh, tools as well I use to make them um, get to make them use their own data. So they're going to use um, their photos or audio and train their own models. It's uh, really tech friendly. And once they are comfortable with, with everything related to artificial intelligence, to machine learning and everything, uh, it would be really nice to use the next one, uh, which is machine learning for kids. They're going to use their own data, they're going to train it, and then write the algorithm to create the game. My young learners love uh, to teach a machine how to play rock, paper, sc rock, paper, scissors. And uh, one of my young learners once told me, like, oh, I'm going to teach a machine. I always thought the machine teaches us. So that was a really nice reflection of her. OK, I might be biased by this, but I was lucky to work with um, their technologies back in 2022. Um, as an intern in San Francisco, where I got to meet the people who created this amazing platform. Uh, they really put their hearts, and it was made of love from computer scientists to the future computer scientists. So uh, if you want your young learners, your kids, uh, to choose like a path, like a career, everything is filtered by job rules, and then they can learn what is uh, needed or required uh, to get that job position. OK, at this point, you might be wondering, Isra, this is maybe too much screen time for the kids. Uh, my answer would be yes or no. But it is actually up to you to decide as a parent or as a teacher how much screen time is needed for your uh, learner or for your kids. So I'm going to repeat this during the uh, talk as much as possible uh, because I would not be responsible for deciding how much screen time your kid can have. But what I can tell you is we can use artificial intelligence to decide that for us, which is an option. So when we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're talking about data, right? How to get this data. One of the ways is to determine their cognitive stage by collecting number of clicks, typing speeds, and navigation with the platform. We can also get their visual cues. We're talking about the gaze uh, tracking, their facial expression, whether they're happy with the platform, they're bored, they don't like it, and their behavioral patterns. So if they are clicking too much, if they are hesitant to click, they're taking too much to get to the next step or to answer questions. Fourth is their physical signs. We can detect whether they are fatigued within their posture, how they are sitting, and if they are blinking too much. So we're collecting all of this data and give it to our model. Uh, usually, they use kind of a reinforcement learning, action reward uh, algorithm. Give it the data, and then we can get um, a really tailored was like a specific for your learner in real time. So the kid or the learner uh, would interact with the platform in real time and you would adjust to his attention span to how he is reacting uh, to the platform or the technology you're trying to teach him. Uh, as artificial intelligence can also optimize screen time, but as I said before, it is only up to you as a parent or as a teacher to decide how much screen time is needed for your learner. OK, hybrid learning approaches. I once had a young learner. She asked me to extend the deadline to an assignment because she did not had, um, have a, a computer at that time. And she said she needed to go somewhere to get a computer to do her assignments. So of course, I said no. 
we don't do privileges to young learners, right? So what I did instead is I printed out those blockly of Scratch, uh, which she needed to do the assignments, and gave her a big uh, white paper and uh, glue. So I asked her to do that, and plug it away. And once she gets into the classroom, we can maybe try her algorithm together, which leads us to maybe including some unplugged activities can also help uh, not only optimize the screen time, but give more accessible accessibility to our young learners. One of my favorite um, platform that I get inspired from to create my unplugged activities, which is computer science without a computer. I highly recommend that you check this out. It's really fun for parents and educators uh, to use um, whatever we have at the house and try to inspire or teach our kids, young learners, computer science. OK, I'm going to give you an example how to teach binary system to kids. OK, so obviously, an 8 years old, because say let's start by an 8 years old into 13 years old, they know the base too. Do you think? No? Yes? So what I'm going to do is going to explain to them that, yeah, of course, we have only two digits, zeros and ones. We don't have numbers anymore. And you need to know the power of two so you can know how to calculate binary. But as a reaction, I'm guessing I'm going to get this. But we need to fix it, because if not, we're going to have this. I love how the teacher runs to you. <laughs> OK, so we're going to do an example. How can I introduce binary system to our little learners? So I'm going to start by making it fun, exciting. How? I'm going to tell them a story. So the story goes, uh, we are in a spaceship, and we landed on a planet because we needed fuel to continue our journey. But whoever lives in that planet speaks with this weird language that we don't know. So we're going to do some research, try to learn their language, and ask them for fuel. At this point, they're going to feel like superheroes. They're going to relate, and they want to learn more to do code uh, at the need of those uh, language. So um, it, as kids, they will always ask why. Why is it zero and once? What is it called? Why are we learning this? So explaining those points will also help them to build um, their knowledge and also relate within uh, the story you're telling. So uh, they're going to, in a way, um, discover that after doing the research that we're only seeing two digits, which are zeros and one, we're going to define what are bits, uh, how the binary digits are, um, what, what do they mean, and how they are created, and how can we calculate that. So to communicate with the computer or with the locals of the, the planets, we're going to use a language which uh, has only zeros and ones. So I'm going to show them some cards. I'm going to ask them the net, what's the number of dots in those cards. So of course, they're going to see one, and then two, and then they're going to see four. And as a young learner, he's going to say, why not three? So we're going to explain that we're going doubles now. Can you guess the next card? And they're going to say 8 and then 16. And if we put them in the order of from the right to the left, we're going to show them that this is how the digital, the binary digital system, um, the binary system, sorry, is uh, created. Next step is uh, we're going to stress on that the order is very important and you have to respect that from the right to the left. And then explain the why two digits. So I'm going to say, if the light is on, we can see how many dots on the card. But if the light is off, we're not going to see the dots. So it's all dark. And then I'm going to give them some examples. Here the light is on, we can see all dots. Here the light is off, we cannot see the dots. What if we have some cards on and some cards off? 
So I'm going to explain that whenever the light is off, we're going to say this is a zero, and whenever the light's on, we're going to represent that by one. Once they understand uh, this part, we're going to have a question. But OK, we see that uh, we have 10 dots, but how come the number 10 is represented by only two ones? At this point, uh, you're going to explain that um, whenever you have a block card, it's multiplied by 0. So we cannot see what's in the card or the number of dots in the card. And whenever we see the dots, so the lights are on, and we can multiply the number of that position uh, in 1. And that's how we get a 10. Um, you can also make them print out the uh, cards, um, make them hold the cards, and turn it whenever the light's on or off. And if you don't like unplugged activities and you want it to be fully digital, you can also use this cool tool where you get um, all the cards digitally, and you can turn them on and off just uh, by clicking. Afterwards, you're going to give them some um, examples. For, uh, for example, ask them to write their binary code of their age, date of birth, any numbers they want, and then send them uh, to their colleagues so they can translate to digital and so on. So within um, this learning uh, journey or experience, uh, you have, of course, you're going to change um, to face a lot of challenges. But uh, one of the main challenges is classroom management. So you get maybe fast or slow learners and how to deal with that is, for example, this one time I had this young learner who was a genius and finishes everything within really small time frame. So what I did is I always prepare an extra assignment specifically for those type of learners. And even if he does that very fast, I'm going to ask him to help the other uh, young learners to finish their assignments so everyone can um, finish early. Also, the, the second point is how to balance screen time. We've already spoke about that, but I also stress on the fact that you can decide on your, how your kid is learning from the internet, uh, from a digital uh, platform, or you, your, maybe you have the time to uh, homeschool. Uh, one of the most important points is how to ensure safety and privacy. Uh, when your kid is um, in, in front of a computer, we can know all how dangerous it can be, but it doesn't mean that if you're going fully digital, uh, that you cannot monitor your uh, learner. So what you can do is have a um, structured kind of a platform that doesn't have uh, your kids' information into uh, third parties and also keep an eye on your uh, learner while he is learning. It, it doesn't mean that give him a computer and then completely shuts off. Uh, there might be other challenges that I'm not aware of, but I highly recommend that you join uh, some communities. There's a lot of internet, a lot of groups where they post um, some uh, content like lesson plan. You get inspired by how other uh, teachers are teaching. Maybe uh, you can ask them directly about challenges you face and hear their thoughts about it. I personally created one. We are few in there, so feel free to join if you're interested. So by the end of the course, I tend to ask my young learners what they want to be in the future. And as you can see that I still get, I don't know, it's right there in the corner, but at least I don't get a fish anymore. <laughs> Sorry? The robot, yes. Yeah, they get inspired by the courses. For example, you can see Steve from Minecraft because they did Hour of God. And they wanted to be the character. 
I also get some love letters, not to brag, <laughs> but uh, they tend to be very expressive when I tell them to write what did they learn by the end of the day and get their feedback uh, so I can know what they are thinking about. Uh, I cannot stress enough on how creating that emotional bond between you and your lo young learner can create a sp safe space for them to learn, to grow, to speak their minds. And that's what artificial intelligence cannot do. I mean, we are all waiting for artificial intelligence to take our places and then we can go pursue our dreams. But it is all about that emotional contact, physical contact that we get within each other that I don't think artificial intelligence would ever be that. So at the end, I can see that um, we have a lot of instructional design uh, elements, we have a lot of cognitive science, but if you have the right intention, uh, it, was, it will always result in learning games. Um, you know your learners best, uh, you know your kids best, so it is up to you to decide which approach works well for them. And if I can leave you with a closing note, is to celebrate your young learners, make them confident, uh, make them engaged in learning within their learning journey, and to celebrate yourself as an educator, as a mentor, or mentors around you for the noble job you're doing. Um, I did this QR code, you can join. Um, I did like a form, it is only a contact form where I um, give like a free workshop for parents, educators to help them um, mentor their kids or young learners into computer science. At the same time, I'm offering a free workshop for your kids to get um, introduced into computer science or STEM in general. So thank you so much for coming today. Uh, feel free to connect and yeah. You can always feel free to, to leave a feedback on the app as well. Uh, I would love to read your notes. And yeah, love letters are also welcome. <laughs> We still have about six minutes. If you're curious about something, uh, if you have a question, please feel free. Who wants their kids to be a software engineer? <laughs> cool. Did you try to introduce them to computer science and they were like, no, I don't want to be like you, Dad? <laughs> no? Yeah, right? I hear that a lot. I hear a lot of computer scientists, they say, I want to introduce my kids to that, but maybe I don't inspire them much because it looks kind of a hard, like a serious job, adult job for them to pursue. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Everything at once. Uh, uh, yes. Exactly, that's a great question. So the question goes, uh, when he introduces computer science or STEM concepts to his kid, so he gets overwhelmed and he wants to learn everything. That was actually my case too when I was a student. I wanted to learn everything, I'm super curious. Uh, so what I advise you to do is to start really simple, so as we said, like really the basics, binary system. And then what can we do with binary system? And then you can explain, for example, the ASCII code and how the computer you can type and uh, create words, documents, and so on, and build on, on that. It's always a great idea to have an idea on what they know and then build based on that. Uh, I can also recommend the techno websites uh, where he can see which part of the computer science word he fits best and try them all track by track and then they can give you uh, whatever he wants or interested in more details or more courses based on that. All good? Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Initialize.
Genesis 